welcome welcome to my youtube channel in today's video i have a friend here with me introduce hi yourself guys. now hi, hi guys i got it so hi guys my name is obed uh, full name obed dodo hey dodo okay this is the king of oxford are you the king of oxford yes. i have no idea he's the present king of oxford so if you see him billy he has money billy yeah. I hope my village people don't see this. <laughs> they uh, if they see it, uh, they should be with you now. Uh, are you not capable? You are capable. Is the is the king of everybody here in Oxford. So Olainka. Oh, whatever. My name is Olainka on this channel. Whatever. Mm -hmm. But just call me whatever. Olainka roots. But call me Olainka. Call me Olainka because that means wealth is surrounding you. So like you are sitting beside wealth. So what does root mean by the way? I don't know. Wow, well, great. Why do you want to disgrace me in front of people? I'm a Bible scholar, don't mind him. I know, but I'm choosing not to tell you. I'm a Bible scholar, I'm choosing. What's the meaning of Obed? That's true, Ruth and Obed, I'm his mother. Oh my oh, god. Yeah. <laughs> uh, in the spirit of not embarrassing you, I'll just say I don't know the meaning of Obed. But it's not like I but, do not. Me too, I know the meaning of Ruth, but really? like you're on my YouTube channel and this is not a Bible page. Get, you get it? This is not fine, a Bible fine, page. Fine, fine, fine. So, yeah. yeah. So yeah, welcome back to another episode of my YouTube channel. Um, this is Ola Inka and this is Catching Up with Ola. So if you are new here and you've not subscribed, kindly subscribe to my channel, okay? Yes, yeah, so we back and yeah, this is my friend Obed. So basically today Obed here will be telling us how he got his admission, things he did, how how he did everything because I know like I've only been able to talk about my own perspective as somebody that is not into STEM. But this is it for all my STEM people, so that people will not say I'm being biased. For all my STEM people, this is your king. He's yet to talk about his admission story, wow. how he got it. I respect him more and I can also would you okay don't worry when you reach out to me I can connect you with him he's a he's a very good person with my permission of course with your permission yes okay, of course with your so. permission don't worry to be beautiful girl with big ah please I don't know what she's talking about <laughs> <laughs> okay anyway so yeah so he's going to tell us about how he got his admission story he's going to tell us how it all began from the very beginning so if you are a STEM major or STEM, what do you people call it? Just make sure you watch this video to the end, okay? So, um, what was like the beginning phase for you? How did it begin for you? Or you just thought about it one day that, okay, I want to study in the US and then you found yourself here. Of course, I knew that you did a lot of things. You had to sacrifice a lot. So, how did this start for, for you? Okay. Hi, everyone. Once again, my name is Obed. So, just to respond to that question. So... Essentially, when I finished school in Nigeria, I went to Kaduna State University and as you can tell, you probably have not heard of it because it's a small university, uh, they have not been around for too long. So we are like uh, a junior sister to uh, Amadou Bello University, ABU, which most of you might know, those from Nigeria, of course. So essentially after school, I did graduate with a first class in chemistry. Um, wait, this... wait, wait there. Did I not tell you? I said this, this, this guy is a king. First class in chemistry. First class. Enough. You're you're screaming. <laughs> Let me scream because okay, okay, okay. Go on. Um, I see. I work with people that you get Shannon Scapa. <laughs> <laughs> you're so excited. Okay. Uh, sorry. The only reason I had to mention that is because it played a key role in helping me be here today, and I'll explain exactly how. Okay. So um. I'm one of three people that graduated first class in my set back then, um, in 2017. So what had happened was we had a group WhatsApp for my graduation class and somebody had put, it, put on a flyer in that group. Uh, it was a flyer from uh, Education USA. So Education USA, it's just, you can Google it and you'll find them. They have branches in Abuja and Lagos and I think they have uh, representatives in Kano and Port Harcourt. I don't know how, I think they have how much more they Oh, and Ibadan, exactly. So uh, pretty cool people. And uh, as a matter of fact, they always uh, describe themselves as the, uh, the most official source of you know, direction when it comes to applying to schools in the US. So that's kind of their function. And they work with the US Embassy. They are in the US Embassy, so they're gonna help you to get things right. So I, so I saw a flyer in a WhatsApp chat and it was like, hey, do you have a first class degree? Do you want to school in the US? 
I still remember that. You want to say something? Education USA. You can see as this guy is hyping you, sponsor my video one day. What was that? Education USA <laughs> should sponsor me because you are indirectly doing adverts that they did not pay for. No, no, no. It's not about adverts. It's about other people knowing about I know, I, I know. Like, exactly. yeah, keep, like that's basically what this channel is all about. But I'm just saying, amazing. if anybody from Education USA ever come across this video, sponsor me. You get it? So. <laughs> Education USA is a subset in the. I know anybody. US I know anything. It's, uh, they can. It's, it's not a one person thing. I know. But anyway, right? so cool. But back to the story. Uh, so the point is that I saw the flyer, and like every other news we see in Nigeria, it's like you see this posting about uh, uh, PTDS scholarships and posting about Shell scholarships and Agbami scholarship and all of that. We know it's really hard sometimes to get it, and we know the problem with applying scholarships in Nigeria because. You're scared that you're going to be siphoned out of it, or there's uh, like, you know, this bias yeah. of choosing winners. So, you know, I, I initially had that fear because I thought, you know, because it's, a, it's, a, it's something in Nigeria that there was going to be a problem like that. But I can guarantee you that it's as transparent and genuine as anything that I've ever seen. So, I, they just asked that if you want to know more about the process, you send an email. So, I just sent out an email. I was like, hey, uh, I just graduated with a first class degree in chemistry and I want to school in the U.S. How can you help me? So they sent me a form to apply to something called Opportunity Funds Program. Okay. And that's why I mentioned the first time that I had a first class in chemistry. Because the Opportunity Funds Program is for high-achieving Nigerian students that are graduated with a first class from a public university. Okay. You can... So part of the reason why it's that way is because the, the Opportunity Fund Program allows the Education USA to sponsor your application to graduate school. Oh, wow. So, wait, so they sponsored your application? Everything. Wow, you did not tell me this. Okay. Yeah. So, they sponsor your application while direct, while not, not directing, but while basically advising you through the entire process. And it's, it's just amazing, actually. So, uh, if you finish with the first class, make sure you don't pay for application fee. Yes. First class from a public university. From a public... Oh, not from a private university. Oh, well, the assumption is if you were able to go to private school, you can be able to afford the application process. Oh, yeah, that's it's true. It's just common sense. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. true, that's true, that's true. So, but yes, if you finish with your first class from a public university, don't, like, don't yeah. do that. Don't pay for application. From a public university and if you're from a low-income family. That's like the, that's like the, the thing. Uh, low in, <laughs> like, you don't know, like... Low income family, please. Everybody in Nigeria, we are, if you go to if you went to a public university, we are all from low income family. Me, uh, Steph, I'm from low income well, family. See, you are not. <laughs> I'm not what? I'm from low income family. So, <laughs> so uh, you gotta write like a bunch of essays explaining they would write it. why you stand out as someone from a low income family, why they should sponsor you, and all they that. They would write it. The I point mean, I'm trying to make is honestly, with or without opportunity funds, just contact Education USA. Okay. They are the most official source. It's hundred times better than working with any agent at all. Yeah, like I do yeah. say, is do not. Except if you are willing to do things by yeah. yourself, because me, I did my by myself. Do yeah. not contact any agents because, like, pretty much some of these agents or agencies have not even been out of Nigeria before. Like, I remember when I was applying for my visa interview, like mm -hmm. the cafe I went to, this guy was like an agent for people that were traveling and then was saying things like was giving me wrong information i was like no that's not right so imagine and to be honest even his english self was no you get like it was so obvious that he has never been out of nigeria before and some people trusted him with their money i don't know how they did but it can never be me right so i guess uh, the main idea is education usa will charge you for membership oh, back okay. then yeah back then when i uh contacted them it was 36k but hey, it's a membership fee for advising you through your entire process of application for grad school down to the day you leave Nigeria. Okay. So like from today you sign up with us, we're going to tell you what you need to do, looking for schools. We'll connect you with other people. I'm, I'm not talking like them, but that's what they will tell you. But they will connect you with other people that are going through the process with you. You'll be on the WhatsApp group with, with, with other smart Nigerians okay. that are pursuing that process at that time. And the advisors are there answering people's questions. Okay. So when you are going to preparation for GRE, you get people posting GRE prompt questions and just kind of, you know, are brainstorming together as a group of people. And you, you see people reporting their results and, you know, testifying. And you get people talking about TOEFL. So you guys will go through the steps together. 
when you get past exams, you start prepping for visa interview. There will be visa interview prompts. It's just a group. It's like you have a team of people doing the same thing with you. Okay. And it's super encouraging. So, it, again, you just feel like you're not the only one. And then you make new friends. And trust me, I mean, I've seen a lot of people. Sometimes it doesn't work for them the first year around. But if you do work with Education USA, that's probably not the best thing to say in this video. But there are people that sometimes it doesn't work for them the first time around. But guess what? After one year of working with these guys, you already know the process. Like, if I were to go back to Nigeria now, I pretty much can travel anywhere with, with what I know now. Because, yes. like, it's, it's, it's all about knowledge. That, you know, like, what you know will help you. If, if you don't know, you don't know. It's like in Nigeria, you say, if you know, you know. You know? So, you, you meet all these smart people that your, some of your friends might travel. God forbid if you do not, you know, you don't have them next time. And when you're writing essays to apply to schools, they will help you. Your, your, your peers will read your essay for you. Yeah. You read for other people. You give feedback. Yes, exactly. Remember, like I said, that you will send your state. Like, don't just assume that you've written the right statement. Send it out to people to help you look at it with another eye. Because if you are reading whatever it is that you've written, you feel like, oh, this is the best. I've written something good. But like sending it out to people, you definitely see people that will criticize it. So like, always send your essays out to people to read for you. Okay, so, so I'm gonna head back. On to the original story. Exactly, because now <laughs> everything we've been doing advert for education, education yes, yes. Exactly. And you don't want them to sponsor me. If you know oh and my god. I don't think it's that simple. I know, but I know. Okay. <laughs> okay, but here so here's a here's the gist. So I sent out an email about them about my interest to school in the US, then they replied my email, sent me a form to apply to opportunity funds. That was the first time I've heard that that term before. I didn't even know what that was. Okay. I, Prior to that time, I didn't know what Education USA was. Okay. So, and they said, hey, you could come to our seminar in, at the Center for Art, Arts and Culture. So I was born in Abuja, raised there as well. So I went to the Center for Arts and Culture, attended their first seminar, and I learned Was this a bit during about, service or like after service? This was before going to service. Okay, okay. Between when you were waiting, that time when you were home waiting for... for what do they call that thing again? Call-up letter. Is it, is it call up letter? Mm -hmm. yeah, something they call it. Is it mobilization? Oh, mobilization. <laughs> oh my God, you forgot. I know. <laughs> You also didn't remember. Uh, yeah. Okay, so, okay, so um so it was between graduation when I was home and mm -hmm. waiting to go to NYC camp. So that was kind of when I went to Center for Arts and Culture. I attended a seminar, beautiful seminar. Um I remember Miss Malate was there. I still wrote the name so I told say. So she Miss presented Miss Malate cute. She's not married, so you probably don't want to know. But yeah, of course, she's good looking. Okay. So I like, think that's uh, the only reason you would remember her name. Oh come on. I was I was just a kid. <laughs> I was like what twenty two something. Uh, so okay, so a kid. Really? Yeah, I was just a kid. Come okay, on. okay. So, <laughs> so um, so what had happened was I went to the seminar. And after the seminar, they told me about free membership. So, mm -hmm. if you do have a first class, I should mention this. If you do have a first class with public university, you can get free membership, so you don't have to pay. Okay. For that Texas year. I don't know how much the membership fee is today. Okay, but so, then it was Texas K. Yeah, all first class degree holders from public schools in Nigeria, you get free membership to Education USA. However, you have to apply uh, for the OFP. If you want the OFP, which is the Opportunity Funds Program, that is sponsorship for graduate school applications, for visa applications, for flight and everything. They, they basically they provide pay for your flight. Yeah. But okay, me let me put it in perspective. My family did not pay a dime throughout the process. Okay. Neither did I uh, technically. Okay. Well, besides small, you know, logistics. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So. Oh, that's that's amazing. Yeah. Okay. So the purpose of the OFP is to cover upfront costs for grad school application. Mm -hmm. That's kind of the borderline summary. So I I enrolled, got free membership. I got an ID card that allows me access to the U.S. Embassy in Abuja, where we always went there. So. You can get this ID card that will allow you access to the embassy. That's pretty cool. That's uh, that's even the first part. And although the check-in process is a bit tedious, you know, to go in, but you can go in and use your libraries to read, meet other people. So that was kind of what I did. Now I got uh, mobilized to NYC. Okay. And I was already education USA member, so I was then sent to Ogun State. Okay. And that's about fourteen hours drive so from Abuja. Abuja. From Abuja. So I went to Ogun State. Um, I knew I was an Education USA member, but I had applied for opportunity funds and I had not heard from them. Okay. So because that process, it was later that I realized that they get previous opportunity for like those from previous years mm -hmm. to review the applications 
of the new people oh so there's no room for hey i know this person i don't know this person or there's no room for that okay you probably had never met any, any of these people okay so it's very unbiased so they just get a select group of people in the current class of ofp and let them go through the applications for the new okay for the new so did you go for so did you go through anybody's application as well i was not one of those because i was not that available oh, I, okay. I, I was in Ogun state I, oh I was yeah silent. oh yeah <laughs> i was in abuja that's that's kind of the but anyways, uh, the main thing there is that I was waiting for feedback on my application for OFP, but I was already a member, so I was in WhatsApp groups, uh, I was in contact with advisors like Auntie Shade, wonderful woman, by the way. We call her Mama Africa. She's a Mama woman. Africa. So she's Auntie one of the Shade. you know primary you know, advisors. Black people are always, you know, uh, the when you come down. <laughs> <laughs> so um, but yeah, uh, after you know, after I got mobilized, I went to NYC camp. Now I, I don't think I've ever told this story online before i don't even told you as well no so while at nyc camp now we all know if you've served in nigeria before you're not allowed to leave camp unless on health basis yes yes if i'm not mistaken mm -hmm. so i was in camp and one fateful monday i got an email from education usa that i was invited for interview wow for the ofp so i was i was basically i was one of the people invited for interview which was pretty cool because according to them a ton of people applied yeah they said almost a thousand applicants i don't know <laughs> how much that is but a lot of people so they only invited 20 people wow for the interview so first of all i i felt blessed that i stood out that much um but i was in nyc camp so what was i gonna do yeah so i actually no i did not i actually gave up so I decided not to go. I so I got. Did you email. reply the email like stating? It was just an email invitation to, you know. Yeah, I did not reply to say, oh hey, I am in NYC. I feel like that might be an automatic, you know, uh, disqualifier because they can't help me. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? They they probably work on schedule and people that can make it make it. That's fine. So, uh, you know, I decided to not go. Mm -hmm. And I kept quiet about it, and I made my peace with that. Through to Thursday, I kept doing NYC stuff, you know, camp stuff. And on Thursday afternoon, I, I, I received a call from my mom. She was just checking on me. And I told her, hey, those people from the NYC emailed me. Just a casual talk. Mm -hmm. And I was like, hey, they said I could come in for interview this Friday. Uh, and that's tomorrow. But, you know, because I'm in camp, I'm not allowed to go. And she said... What are you talking about? They invited you for interview, you're not going. Like you be down go take the She 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 literally said I should do anything that I can to leave that camp that night. Yes. So, so I had given up. So until she said that. So if not for my mom, again, I'll probably not be here. Mm, that's true. So thank mommy. <laughs> mommy, I know like I'm literally is figurative more, but real mommy. If you ever come across this video, thank you very much. <laughs> All right, so thank you. Thing to do, I would rather just do my own thing, okay. which I did. So I, with the motivation I had in mind, I was on the bus that night from Ogun State to Abuja, and I arrived in the morning. The interview was for nine. I arrived by eight. My mom made me hot cocoa. I took that, and I was on my way to the city. I did. I, I just arrived and they just dropped uh, like in like questions, GRE questions. I was surprised. I, I didn't know what the interview was about. It was actually a mock GRE. <laughs> it was a mock GRE exam. Wow. And we did that for about two hours and 30 minutes. Wow. And after that, because uh, I came in late, I, I mean, I was like a few minutes late. So it, we, I just came in to just drop the exam because I was like, okay, cool. So we did that. And after that, then it was normal interview oral about like by myself, confirming some of the stories I had wrote in the essays. Applying for opportunity forms, you're gonna to have to write essays about yourself. Lots of essays, actually. It, it was it was tedious, but just to confirm my story. And when I was leaving, I remember a guy in the interview room told me that my story had K leg. Really? Yeah, that I like. I think your story has K leg because he he found it hard to believe when I said I had like I think uh, back then I said I had like four shirts at some point. In the okay. It, it it sounded unbelievable to him, so he's like. How would somebody else doesn't shit. understand how life uh, how life works. That <laughs> so um yeah so that's how crazy it was so when he said that i had even given up i thought maybe this is all a waste of time so i went back to the states walked back into the camp like i walked out 
okay. literally. And I was just going to tell you, I didn't take a back door. I took the main gate out and the main gate in, case closed. Okay. So I walked back in, life continued. When I left camp, it was assigned. Uh, did, did, when, I, when I went to my PPA, then I received an email saying, hey, congratulations, you were selected. For the OCP, sorry. For the OFP. OFP, okay. So out of uh, 20 people that applied, uh, I was one of the 10. That goes that, Wait, was it 10 people that did? I can't remember, I think it's nine people. people. I thought the people they offered the, Did I not you know, tell you that <laughs> the this guy, so, I bought you gold. You know what they call gold, shining gold. This is it. Okay. Sorry, don't, don't. No, know, no, no, like I'm just being sincere. I'm not raising the owl, but like I'm just, be, I'm saying things as it is. I'm just, you know, saying the truth. So this is gold. Gold is sitting beside wealth. What do you expect? If you've not subscribed, subscribe because I'll bring more gold to you. More well, gold and more wealth. Uh, they, Oh, the compliments. <laughs> so um, that's how I got into the, OF, the OFP. I didn't know anybody. Regardless of how tough the interview was, and I thought it wasn't going to work out, it mm -hmm. worked out. So I didn't know anybody. The reason I'm telling you all these stories is to know that I'm a common person like you, and I had a hard time in university, probably than most of you, or maybe not as much as some of you. Mm -hmm. So wherever you are, just think of me as that, as that guy that fits into the spectrum, and it worked out. Also, like I know some people have, you know, come, they come to my DM to say my parents are not wealthy, my parents are not these, I cannot study abroad. This is an example. Okay? Yeah, my dad, my dad didn't even believe I was traveling until the day I came home with my visa. I said, hey, the visa was approved. I showed him like that. Okay. Then that was when he believed I was traveling. He never, so he never gave me one dime. I'm not saying this, I'm not casting shade on him. I'm just telling you guys that I never took money from my parents. Okay. For this process, and I wasn't working. I was a copper. Okay, okay. So, so after then, after you got approved, what was like the next step for you?